Algebra 1, Topic 7, Computer-Based Test, Exam Review 2021, Section 2. Section 2 of the exam has 15 questions. Question 1a, what are the coordinates of the intercepts of the graph of the function f of x equals 4 to the x power minus 16? All right, the easiest way, first of all, they're asking for the intercepts. That means that they want to know what is the x-intercept and what is the y-intercept, all right? So they want to know both the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The easiest way to remember how to find each one is like this. To find the x-intercept, you got to make y equal to 0 and solve for x. And to find the y-intercept, you got to make x equal to 0 and solve for y. So whatever intercept you're looking for, make the other letter equal to 0. Whatever intercept you're looking for, make the other letter equal to 0. Si están buscando para el intercept de x, tienen que hacer y igual a 0. Y si están buscando el intercept de y, Tienen que hacer x igual a cero. Okay, so to find the x-intercept, I make y equal to zero and solve for x. So here I have my function written out. I make y equal to zero. Remember, f of x means the same thing as y. So I replaced f of x with a zero. And now I just got to solve for x. I moved 16 to the left. So I got 4 to the x power equals 16. So what 4 to the what power equals 16? 4 to the second power equals 16. That means that when y is 0, all right, when y is 0, because I, I replaced the y with 0 right here, x equals 2. That's the x-intercept. What is x when y equals 0? Again, to find the x-intercept, I make y equal to 0 and solve for x. Okay, para encontrar el intercept de x, tengo que hacer y igual a 0 y resolver para x. Recuerden que f de x quiere decir lo mismo que y. Alright, now let's find the y-intercept. Okay, ahora vamos a encontrar el intercept de y. So to find the y-intercept, I'm going to make x equal to 0 and solve for y. Okay, para encontrar el intercept de y, tengo que hacer x igual a 0 y resolver para y. So right here is my x. Replace that with a 0. Any number to the 0 power equals 1. 1 minus 16 is negative 15. So when x is 0, y or f of x is negative 15. And that is my y-intercept. Again, if you memorize this way of thinking about it, it's easy to always remember. The x-intercept is what is x when y is 0, y is 0. And the y-intercept is what is y when x is 0. So whatever intercept you're looking for, make the other letter equal to 0. El intercept que están buscando tiene que hacer la otra letra igual a cero. Así que si estoy buscando el intercept de X, tengo que hacer Y igual a cero. Y si estoy buscando el intercept de Y, tengo que hacer X igual a cero. All right. 1B, same question. I just changed up the numbers so that you could practice, but it's the same thing, all right? So to make sure you get it. Okay, esta es la misma pregunta, pero le cambié los números. So you can check that out later and practice on your own to make sure you understood it. And 1C, I put another one as well. I put three of them. Okay? Tres problemas similares para que lo practiquen. Mismo concepto, pero con diferentes números. All right, moving on to number two. Three paintings have a current value of $19,000. The estimated value of each painting over the next five years is shown. Which of the following statements describes the value of the paintings over the next five years? All right, so first of all, if you look really quickly at the answers some some of them say okay first of all we let's look at this decreases decays increases grows all right so decrease and decay means the value goes down increase and grow means the value goes up okay estas dos palabras quiere decir que el valor va para abajo y estas dos palabras que el valor eh, está aumentando so if you look at all the examples here, all of them are going up in value. En todos estos ejemplos, el valor está aumentando. So it can't be any of them that say that the value is going down. No puede ser ninguno de las respuestas que dice que el valor está bajando. Tiene que estar subiendo. Okay, now if we look at these two answers, one of them says that 
painting C increases at a larger constant rate. And the other one says at a larger constant percent rate. Okay, that difference is very important for this question. Okay, a constant rate would mean that you're adding the same number over and over again. Okay, um, did I put anything like that here? No, 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 I didn't put any like that here, okay? But a constant rate would mean that you're just adding the same number over and over again. Whereas a larger constant percent rate means that you're multiplying, means that it's an exponential function where you're multiplying by the same number every time. I'll say it again. If it's increasing at a larger constant rate, that means you're adding the same number over and over again. But if they add this word percent, okay, it's increasing at a, or grows at a larger constant percent rate, that means it's being multiplied by the same number over and over again. Okay, which, I mean, listen, I made up this example. I can't remember how similar it is to the exam. It's pretty close, but I can't remember how similar it is to the answers, to the answer choices. But what I want to go over is this. If you ever need to check what the, you're going to have to do this several times on the test, on several different questions. So if you ever got to check by what rate is this being multiplied at, what you got to do is take a number and divide by the number before it. Take any number and divide by the number before it. And you should probably do it more than one time to make sure that it's the same every time. Okay, so for example, so for example, if I look at painting, let's just do it with painting C real quick. If I take this number right here, 29,234, and put it in my calculator and divide it by the previous number, 26,820, I'm going to get... Um, let me write it here. 29,234 divided by the previous one. And it gives me approximately 1.09. That's what that means, approximately. Okay? Now, if I do the same thing with the with 26,820 divided by the one before it, which is 24,606, I'm going to get approximately, let me do it a second, 26,820 divided by 24,606 equals, okay, again, approximately 1.09. All right, if I check that for all of these, like dividing by the one before, you'll get 1.09 for all of these. All right, so this is increasing by a constant percent rate. You have to know that because maybe for this question, it's not really necessary, but there's others coming up that you're going to have to do this. All right, so the sooner you, you understand that, the better. Ok, así que si quiero saber, bueno, primero que nada, si dice aquí que está aumentando por un rato constante, eso quiere decir que están sumando la misma cantidad cada vez. Pero si dice, como dice abajo, que está subiendo por un, um, un, un constante, por un rato que tiene un constante porcentaje, eso quiere decir que están multiplicando por el mismo número cada vez. Eso es muy importante. Porque eso sale en varios problemas en este examen. Si yo quiero saber por cuánto, por, eh, cuál es el rato que está multiplicando, por cuál rato se está multiplicando cada vez, lo que tengo que hacer es coger un número y dividirlo por el número que viene antes, que es lo que hice aquí, para chequear. Y si chequeo, si sigo chequeando, cada número se está multiplicando por 1.09 para coger el próximo número. ¿Cómo lo sé? Porque si divido este número por este número, me da 1.09 y eso quiere decir que este número aquí se está multiplicando por 1.09 para coger el próximo. All right, moving on. All right, the graph below shows the population growth for a town during each of a seven-year period. Which equation best fits the data where X is the year and Y is the population in thousands? This question is so easy. If you understood the IXL that I assigned on matching graphs with uh, exponential functions. Okay, so... First of all, look at the what the initial amount has to be, all right? This dot, when x is 0, this dot is right in between 0 and 5, so it's at 2.5. So that's the initial amount is 2.5. So it can't be b and it can't be c. By the way, b and c, um, b, is a, is an, a, um, b is, is a linear function, okay? <laughs> b is a linear function. How do I know that? Because it's in slope-intercept form. So B is a straight line. It's not a curvy line. So it can't be B. 
and c is something that you haven't learned yet which is called the quadratic function you haven't learned that yet but that's in the shape of a u like mr u all right it's either <laughs> all right so a quadratic function is a is a, the graph of it is a u all right. Uh, anyways, it's it's neither of those. And by the way, the uh, exam has wrong answers that look like that. So it's helpful to know that. Okay. So it's between these two. Okay. Now you got to remember that that if if this number if b, all right. Remember when I got a exponential function, if b is between zero and one, that's that's decay. That's exponential decay, where it would go like this. From left to right but if B is greater than 1 that's exponential growth which means it goes like that and that's what's happening that's what's happening right here exponential growth so this is an easy one unless you're completely lost and haven't paid attention to anything but if you've been paying attention this is a uh, very easy and there's several questions like this throughout the exam okay así que a es la cantidad inicial y b si es más grande que uno tiene que ser uh, crecimiento exponencial, que es así. Así que esto es bien fácil. Si hicieron el IXL que yo puse sobre um, conectando una, una ex, eh, eh, función exponencial con el gráfico que va con esa función. All right. Number four. Daranis is asked to write a report about the population growth. growth. Let me try that again. Again. That Anis is asked to write a report about the population growth of two current countries, A and B. <laughs> the population of these two countries over the past five years is shown below. Which of the following statements can that Anis use in her report to accurately describe the population growth, the population of country B? Select two that apply. There's two correct answers. Hay dos respuesta correcta. Okay, so first of all, let's look at this real quick, all right? Look at country A. Okay, country A, is that a linear function or an exponential function? Remember, a linear function is a straight line, and in a linear function, you're adding the same number over and over again. An exponential function is a curvy line, and you're multiplying the same number over and over again. So if we look at this one, you're obviously adding, every time you're adding 10,000 to every single number. All right, so this is going to be a straight line. Like when I do the graph of this, um... Actually, let me do it like this. All right, 2016. I mean, you, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this to, to picture this. All right. Um, whatever, here's 220,000. The graph would start here and be a, a straight line, you know. That would be the graph of country A. All right, whereas country B... All right, if you look at country B, if you divide, like if I divide 207, let me do it a second, 207, 360, divided by 172, 800. Let me write that down. 207, 360, divided by the previous one, 172, 800, you get 1.2. If I divide this one by this one, I'm also going to get 1.2. If I divide this one by this one, I'm also going to get 1.2. So basically, everything here, each ter each number is being multiplied by 1.2 to get the, the following one. Okay, cada número aquí se está multiplicando por 1.2 para coger el siguiente. Okay, ¿cómo sé? Porque dividí este número por este número y me dio 1.2. Y si sigo chequeando, todos son, me van a dar 1.2 porque yo hice este, este ejemplo. All right, so for country B... The initial amount is 100,000, all right, but it's going like this, and I mean, you should know by, by now that if you have this straight line, because this comes up in a lot of questions, all right, if you have this straight line and this curvy line, eventually, the curvy line that's going up is eventually going to pass the straight line, all right, you should realize that by now, okay? Así que cuando tienen una, esta línea recta y otra línea que está curvando para arriba, eventualmente esta línea que está haciendo una curva eh, va a ser más alto eh, va a estar encima de esta línea recta okay so when i look at these uh once you realize that this one is linear and this one is exponential 
On the test, it might be the other way around. You got to check it out, okay? En el examen, a lo mejor está de la otra manera. Tienen que mirar con cuidado. All right, so, all right, so they're asking her, they're saying which two statements can Daranis use in her report to describe the population of country B. So these answers are from the point of view of country B. So will country B always be less than the population of country A? No. By the way, this is B and this one's A. This one's B. All right. Letter B, will country B eventually exceed the population of country A? Yes. Letter C, is country B going, is, is, let me say, <laughs> is country B increasing linearly? No, it's not. That's country A, okay? La letra C dice que si eh, país B está aumentando linearmente. No. Letter D, it is increasing exponentially. Yes. Country B is increasing exponentially. All right? So that one's pretty easy. All right, number five. Which of the following expressions are equivalent to 64 to the x power? Select all that apply. Let's look at these because there are several correct answers. Um, all right, so let's look at A first. I, I bought a respuesta correcta. All right, so 4 to the 3x power. First of all, remember remember that when you have an exponent raised to the power of another exponent, you multiply the two exponents together. So this this is actually important and it comes up a lot on this exam. Because if it's like this, I could just separate them like that. Which allows me to work out 4 to the 3rd power is 64 to the x power. I'll say it again. So this is 4 to the 3x power, right? Remember that when you have an exponent raised to the power of another exponent, you just multiply them together. So like if I had this originally, I could rewrite it like that and they both mean the same thing. But I wrote it like this because that allows me to do 4 to the 3rd power. 4 to the 3rd power is 4 times 4 times 4. That's going to give you 64 and I'm left with that x. And that's equivalent to what they had here. So this one is correct. This is one of the correct answers, okay? Recuerden que cuando tengo un exponente... Al poder de otro exponente se multiplican, así que yo puedo escribir esto de esta forma. Esto sale mucho durante el examen. Escribiéndolo de esta forma me deja hacer 4 a la 3, que es 64, y la X se quedó ahí. Así que ahora lo que escribí está es equivalente a lo que dice aquí. All right, letter B. Okay, so with the same concept, an exponent raised to the power of another exponent. I could write that like this. Which allows me to do 32 to the second power to the x power. But 32 to the second power is uh, 1024. So that does not work. Eh, those, are, those are not equivalent. Hopefully you're getting the uh, idea. All right, so right here I got 4 to the 2x power. I could write that as 4 to the 2 to the x power which equals 16 to the x power, that also does not work. All right, this one right here, I could rewrite that. I could rewrite that like this, which I could also rewrite it like this, which means 64 to the x power. That one's correct. Again, those exponents, all I'm doing is multiplying x times 2 gives me 2x. And I could rewrite that like that, and it means the same thing, because again, I would multiply 2 times x to get back to here. But by re rewriting it like this, it allows me to work out 8 squared, which is 64, and leave the x there. Okay, and the last one, e, 2 to the 6x, I could rewrite it like this. That allows me to do 2 to the 6 power, which is, guess what, 64, and I got the x out there. All right, there's a similar question on the test, so you need to... I, I made up this example, and it's imitating the answers that are on the test. So you need to be familiar with what I'm doing, okay? Um, yo hice este ejemplo y está imitando la respuesta que están en el examen. Así que tienen que entender lo que yo hice. Esto es fácil. Cuando lo entienden es bien fácil, no es difícil. All right, it's not... It's really not difficult. All right, so there are the answers. Number six... Which function displays the fastest growth as the x values continue to increase? Okay, so first of all, if you look at them, 
um, first of all, look at C of X. Look at this one a second. In this one, they're just adding three every time. They're adding three, adding three, adding three, adding three. Okay, so, so they're just adding three every time. Um, really, the ones that are going to display the fastest growth are going to be the exponential ones. So let's look at those. If you look at A of X, and if you divide um, negative 12 by negative 15, you get 0 0.8. So this times 0 0.8 gives you 12. Um, 8 divided by 12. This time 0 0.6 repeating. They're being multiplied by different numbers on A of X. 4 divided by 8 is 0 0.5. 2 divided by 4, or negative 2 divided by negative 4 is going to give you 0 0.5. Okay, whatever. That's not the right answer. Let's look at the other two examples. Let's look at G of X a second. In G of X, everything is being multiplied by 2. By 2 by 2 times 2. That's what I mean, right? I'm writing times 2, by the way. Okay, in G de X, todo se está multiplicando por 2. And by the way, if you're not sure, you could just do 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.25, or 1 divided by 0 0.5, or 2 divided by 1, or 4 divided by 2. They're all going to give you the answer of 2, because every number is being multiplied by 2 to get the following number. All right, now F of X, look at F of X. Everything is being multiplied by 3. Zero point, again, if you don't realize that, you would just do in your calculator. 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.1, and it'll give you 3. 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.3 will give you 3. 2.7 divided by 0 0.9 will give you 3. All right, so in f of x, everything is being multiplied by 3. All right, so that's why f of x is the correct, whoops, f of x is the correct answer. Okay, f de x es la respuesta correcta porque en f de x todo, todos los números se están multiplicando por 3. Um, así que es la función que está enseñando el crecimiento más, más rápido. All right. All right, number 7. The coordinate plane shows two exponential functions. Which equation is true? All right. Um, okay, I can't remember if we went over this in this class. Um, it's been a while since we, with testing and everything, since we, uh, I don't think we did, to be honest with you. Um, but when you have a, a function, right, if, when you have a function, if I, if I add a number to the back, it moves it up. That, like if I add, let's, pay, let's say I put plus 5, that's going to move the function 5 units up. If I subtract 5, that's going to move the function 5 units down. Now, if I put those numbers inside the parentheses, this moves it left and right. However, it's the opposite of what you would think. So if I add 5, that actually moves it 5 units to the left, not to the right, but to the left. And if I subtract 5, that's going to move it 5 units to the right. All right, so let me write this. This number, if it's in the back, not inside the parentheses, it moves the function up and down. And if it's inside the, the parentheses, it moves it left and right. But like I said before, if you add, that actually moves it to the left. It's the opposite of what you would normally think. If you add 5, it moves it 5 units to the left. If you subtract 5, it moves it 5 units to the right. Okay, so if this number is here, it moves the function to the left and to the right. Y si está dentro de los paréntesis, lo mueve izquierda y derecha. Pero para si suma cinco, si suma un número, lo mueve para la izquierda esa cantidad de veces. Y si resta un número, se mueve para la derecha esa cantidad de veces. All right, so that in mind, let's look at this real quick, okay? Um, first of all, let me show you that they're the same function, just moved up or down, okay? Déjame enseñarle que es la misma función, okay? All right, let's use that as our reference point. Okay, so if you look at, like, let's use what we know about rise and run, okay? This dot is one unit to the right and two units up. 
So if I go one unit to the right and two units up, it also has a dot right there. Or, you know, it has a point right there. And from here, the next one that I can see is approximately, it's kind of hard to tell, but um, it's kind of like in the middle here. So if I go one unit to the right and one, two, three, let's say 4.5 up, one unit to the right and one, two, three, four point five up, they ha they match up. Okay, so basically what I'm trying to show you is that it's the same function just moved up or down. Okay, los dos son la misma función pero uno está más para abajo que el otro. So if you look at these equations, knowing what I just said, okay, if we take f of x and move it, use this as your re reference point from here to here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me, let me write that better. From here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six units down. It's either f of x. All right, let me write like this. It's, e <coughs> it's either f of x moves six units down, will become g of x, or f of x equals g of x moved six units up. It's either one or, I mean, they're both right, but uh, it's a matter of, like, which one of these is on here. Okay, so out of these two options, both of these are correct. The only one that's on here is, uh, I messed up. This should say six, guys. I meant to put a six there. <laughs> Whoops. All right, this is the correct answer. Letter D, okay? Sorry about that. That should be a six. Eso debe ser un seis. Por accidente escribí un 5, ¿ok? Pero es un 6. ¿Ok? Porque lo, la, las dos ecuaciones que escribí aquí están correctas, pero solamente, solamente esta está en la respuesta. ¿Ok? Right, um, All right, so hopefully you understood that. That's on the test, and that's a simple one, ¿ok? You know what, let me fix that real quick because it's bugging me. Uh, all right, so there you go. So there it's fixed. All right, next one. Number eight. The value of a certain stock has decreased by 7% per day for the past 10 days. The initial price of the stock was $40. All right, so that's our initial amount. La cantidad inicial. All right, so they all say 40, so whatever. That doesn't answer our question. Which equation describes the value of the share? Which equation describes the value of the share price of the stock as a function of N, the number of days elapsed during the 10-day period? All right, so it's decreasing by 7% per day. So this should be very simple by now. All right, 100% minus 7% equals 93% which equals 0 0.93, all right? That's, this is the correct answer right here, all right? By the way, look at the wrong answers. If you're not sure of what you're doing, you may very well get confused with the wrong answers, all right? Another way to think about it is one minus 0 0.07 equals 0 0.93, all right? Those are the two ways to think about it, but that's an easy one. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of these word problems, and once you get the way I explained it, once you get it, it's so simple. They're all the same thing. So, by the way, the correct answer is C there. All right, so 9A, what is the value of X in the equation below? Okay, I put several to practice like this. This is on the exam, and it's simple. All right, so let's just look at this, this part right here, okay? Let me draw that better. Quick question. When you have the square root, of a number, what's the in index that I always said is invisible? What number is here that's invisible? You should be answering the number two. There's a number two here, and what exponent is here? If there's nothing written, what exponent is here? One, right? So remember that I could rewrite what's here. This part right here, I could rewrite it like, um, I could rewrite it like this, a over b to the uh, one-half power. All right, this right here, I could rewrite it like this, a over b to the one-half power. That's the key. 
all right because if I rewrite it like that a over B to the one-half power now I multiply their exponents because remember when you have an exponent raised to the power of another exponent you uh, you multiply them okay so one-half times 4 over 5 that's gonna become um, a over B to the 4 over 10 which equals when I simplify that when I simplify that exponent that fraction I'm gonna have 2 over 5 okay so the question is what is the value of X what is X equal so if on one side I got a over B to the 2 over 5 power equals a over B to the X power that means that X equals whatever number is here because the bottom part is the same the base is the same in both of them okay si tengo esto X tiene que ser equivalente a este exponente so X equals 2 over 5 X es igual a 2 sobre 5 that's the answer I put some more practice ones like this okay oh by accident I already put the answer on this one but let me go through it anyways okay so look at this one let's just look at what's inside the parentheses for a second vamos, vamos a mirar lo que está dentro de los parentheses inside the parentheses I got I'm having a tough time drawing this for some reason I got that right dentro de los parentheses tengo esto that I could rewrite it like this A over B to the one third power. Remember, there's an invisible one here. So I'm just putting this on the bottom of the one. Okay, now that I got it in that form, I could do that one over three times the exponent that's right here, three over four. When I multiply them, that gives me A over B to the three over 12 power, but I gotta simplify that fraction so it's gonna be a over b to the one fourth. All right. So again, if it says a over b to the one over four power equals a over b to the x power, and the question is, what is x? X has to equal this number because the bases are the same. So that's why the answer is one over four. That's on the exam. Okay, number ten. Match the expressions on the top of the chart to the equivalent expression on the left of the chart. All right. All right. So let's look at these. Let's take. Where should I start? All right. Let's start. All right. Let's look at this one first. Vamos um, All right. So remember that if you have an exponent, basically the this uh, exponent on the outside, the one third, I gotta distribute it to everything inside the parentheses. El uno sobre tres lo tengo que distribuir a todo lo que está dentro de los parentheses. All right? When I distribute it, it's gonna become 27 to the one third power times a to the six over three power. Okay, 27 to the one third power, that means the cube root of 27. The cube root of 27 is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. La raíz cúbica de 27 es 3, porque 3 por 3 por 3 me da 27. And here, a to the 6 over 3 power, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So basically, when I simplify that, I get 3 times a to the second power. Cuando simplifico esto, me da 3 a a la 2. Okay, so now I gotta check which one of these will give me that same number when I, that same um, expression when I simplify it. Tengo que chequear cuál de estas me da la misma expresión cuando lo simplifico. For the sake of time, I already know the correct answer. The correct answer is this one. Let me show you why. Okay, la respuesta correcta es esta. Déjame enseñarle por qué. All right, um, so. Uh, Okay, so on the top, the square root of 225 is 15. And the square root of a to the fourth power is a squared. On the bottom, the square root of 25 is 5. Now, if I simplify the 15 over 5 by dividing them, I get 3. So this gives me the, th the same thing I had before. All right. 
Okay, moving on. So for this one, that's the correct answer. Okay, now let's look at this one. This one's easy. Any number to the zero power equals one, and one times two to the second power is four. So one times four equals four. So when I simplify this expression, I get four. So all I gotta do is find which one of these, when you simplify, it gives you four. It's obviously the square root of 16. And the last one, any number to the, the one half power, that means the same as the square root. 25 to the one half power means the square root of 25 plus the square root of 25. Because the two is right here and it's invisible and the one is right here and it's invisible. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of 25 is five. We're adding them. So when I simplify this expression, it gives me 10. So now I just gotta see which one of these expressions, when you simplify it, gives you 10. Obviously, the square root of 100 is 10. So that one would be that one. All right, I'm, again, I'm imitating the way the questions are on the test and the way the answers are on the test. So if you understand these concepts, you'll understand it on the test. All right, number 11. All right, number 11, a car purchased for $25,000 depreciates, that means it goes down in value, annually at a rate of 7%. The value of the car T years after its purchase is given by the, this expression. Write an expression that represents the monthly depreciated value at the rate at which the car is depreciating. All right, look. Okay, this one is kind of hard to explain, to be completely honest with you. And um, I honestly regret, there was, a, there was an IXL on uh, compound interest that I should have assigned to you guys and I didn't. Maybe, maybe I'll do that in the near future. All right, I didn't realize that this exam had so many questions uh, with compound, with, regarding interest, okay? So um, maybe I'll assign it in the near future, but for now, all I want to tell you is this. Um, to not spend too much time on this because I don't think it's that important um, and it's hard to explain the answer on the test is in this form la respuesta en el examen está en esta forma so what I want to point out is this it says write an expression that represents the monthly depreciated value at the rate at which the car is depreciating okay since it's monthly you're writing a 12 here because there's 12 months per year and you're dividing, you're doing um, the interest rate, you're putting it to the 1 over 12 power. All right, I'll say it again. And um, again, this is, this, is a poor <clears throat> this is a poor explanation by me, but part of the reason is, is because I think this, this question is like, I don't think this question is a good question to put on a test, in my personal opinion. And I looked throughout your book, and there was no example like this at all. In fact, no, let me take it further. I, I'm not even joking when I say... I spent like an hour on the internet researching this problem. I'm not exaggerating. It may have been more than an hour. And I could not find a similar example or formula anywhere else except on the district test. Okay, and I even talked about it with some of your other Algebra 1 teachers. Well, with one of your other Algebra 1 teachers. Um, so all I will tell you, I don't like explaining things like this, but in this case, I feel like I don't have a choice, is that um, make sure you know that form on the test, this number will be different and this number will be different. But every but the important part is this part right here. That's the important part to get the answer correct on the test, all right? Esta es la parte importante para coger esta respuesta correcta en el examen. Okay? Um, en el libro no había ningún ejemplo o e explicación de un ejemplo como este, ni ninguna fórmula como esta. Así que no me gusta esta pregunta. Y lo mejor que le puedo decir es que para coger la respuesta correcta en el examen tiene que tener esta parte de esta forma. ¿Ok? Y estas dos partes ya lo deben entender. These two things you should already understand. We've done a million examples. All right, number 12. Which machine is decreasing by a constant percent rate each year? All right, remember a constant percent rate means that you're multiplying by the same amount each time okay you're multiplying by the same amount each time or dividing you could also think about it as dividing by the same amount each time all right now first of all let's get this one out of the way if you look at this one 
um, you're just subtracting 500 each time. So this is a linear function, and that's not what they're looking for here. When it says a percent rate, that means multiplying or dividing. All right, so this one is linear, so that's not what they're looking for. This is not the correct answer. Okay, así que la máquina A está es una función lineal, así que eso no es lo que están buscando porque quieren saber cuál máquina está bajando por un rato, por un porcentaje constante cada año. Así que eso quiere decir que se está multiplicando o dividiendo por el mismo número. All right, so um, I purposely made these so that one of them is multiplying by the same amount for like two or three times and then it changes to a different amount. Because I want to tell you that you got to make sure, because they don't try to fool you like that on the test. You got to make sure to check as many as you can to make sure it's the same throughout. Okay, so um, machine C is the one that if you divide, like for example, 20,362.66 divided by 21,434.38. Okay, it's going down. It's being multiplied by 0 0.95. All right. Again, I designed, I made up this. Uh, every one of these is being multiplied by 0 0.95. Okay. I made up this example. Every one of these is being multiplied by 0 0.95. But what I did, even though I'm not going to go through it now, on machine B, it's being multiplied by like, I, I can't remember what I did it by. It's something like 0. Point, I don't remember, 0 0.90 something for like two times. And then I switched it to something else. So be careful with that on the exam. Make sure to check all of them to make sure that it's the same percentage for every single one. Okay? Um, traten de siempre chequear lo, la, todas las situaciones posibles porque creo que en este problema en el examen hay una máquina donde está multiplicando por la misma cantidad como para dos o tres veces y entonces cambia para una cantidad diferente. Y si solamente chequean dos o tres veces se van a creer que, que sigue ese porcentaje todo el tiempo cuando cambió en el medio. All right, if you don't check them all, you're going to think it's the same throughout when it really it was just only two or three times and then it switched. All right. All right, for this next one I got to go over, we need this formula. All right, you're actually already familiar with most of, with all of it to be honest with you, even though you may not realize it, right? Just look. Principle, this is the compound interest formula. And this is what I was talking about, that there was an IXO on it that I should have assigned and I didn't realize it and I didn't, so I'm sorry about that. But if you knew how busy I've been the last two or three weeks preparing the, um, the geometry students for their Algebra 1 EOC, you would totally understand, all right? But look, where it says principal, you could just think about that as the initial amount to relate it to what you already know, okay? El principal, pueden pensar de eso como la cantidad inicial. The only thing that I, the main thing to point out on this is the N, all right? N stands for the number of times the interest is compounded per year. That's the important part that's new to you on these problems. Everything else, you've already seen it, believe it or not. So again, N is the number of times that the interest is compounded per year. This N as well as this one, they're both the same thing, all right? There should be an arrow pointing to this one as well, okay? Ok, lo principal, que, lo, lo importante que tienen que darse cuenta es que N representa la cantidad de, los la, la números de veces que el interés está co compounded cada año. Alright, so with that in mind, let's look at this problem. Yeah, the answer is right here, but let me, it's a different question and a different example on the test, alright? So I'm just using this one to explain it. Ok, en el examen, en la pregunta es diferente, estoy usando este ejemplo para explicarlo. How to, cómo encontrar la respuesta. Alright, so look. It says here, the amount earned on an investment of $4,000, that's the principal, or the initial amount, that is compounded semi-annually. Semi-annually means two times per year. Two times per year. Semi-annually, quiere decir dos veces por año, is given by this expression. All right, so let's pause. Let's pause for a second. Let's take this expression, and let me show you something. 4,000. Hold on. Let me write it directly underneath here. So 4,000.
Okay, now... Okay, notice that it says 2T here, right? I'm skipping this part for a second. 2T, right? T stands for the number of years. N, what did we say N stands for? N stands for the number of times the interest is compounded per year. N representa la cantidad de veces que el interés está compound, compounded cada año. I have no idea how to translate that, <laughs> that word. All right, so N equals 2. N es igual a 2. So that means that if I write it like this way, the number down here is 2, and the number up here, look at, look here. Here it says 1.12. The 1 is this one right here. And the 0.12 is what you get when you divide a number by 2. One number divided by 2 equals 0.12. That would be 0 0.24. All right? All I did is rewrite what it says here, but so that it's in this form. All right, the principal is 4,000. 1 plus 0 0.24 divided by 2. Why 2? Because it says a 2 right here. Because the interest is being compounded semi-annually, which means 2 times per year. So if I write it this way, there's a 2 down here. And on top of that, that has to be 0 0.24. How did I get 0 0.24? By multiplying the 0 0.12 by 2 to get 0 0.24. All right. Um, okay, what next? Uh Okay, so that means that if I wasn't doing it, hold on, if I wasn't doing it semi-annually, it would be, this would be the function. Hold on, let me pause for one second here. Hold on. All right, sorry for the interruption. I lost my train of thought for a second, and I had to think about it for a second. Okay, so uh, back to what I had written. All right, so... Okay, so that's being compounded two times a year. If I wanted to change it to be compounded... Uh, where's the... Quarterly. Quarterly means four times per year, right? If I wanted to change it to be compounded quarterly, that means four times per year. So I'd have to change it to have a four on beneath the 0 0.24 and a four here. Okay, when I change it to this, 0 0.24 let me put a zero there. 0 0.24 divided by 4 is 0 0.6. Okay, and the 4T is on the outside. All right. Um, you need to think about that one for a second because there's a question like this on the test, right? Okay, so um, I'm trying to say, should I go over this again or... All right, I'm going to leave it at that, guys. All right, but there's a question like this on the exam. Again, all I did is, first of all, change it to be in this form. I changed it to be in this form. And since it was being compounded semi-annually, that means two times per year. So I put a 2 here and a 2 here. And I had to change the, the 0 0.12 to what it was before it got divided by 2 by multiplying the 0 0.12 by 2 to get 0 0.24. Now that I got it in this form, I want to change it to be uh, compounded quarterly. That means four times per year. So I changed all the twos that were in the equation to fours. And that gave me this. 0 0.24 divided by four is 0 0.6. And everything else is what's here, okay? Um, así que primero lo escribí de esta forma, okay? Como está en esta línea aquí, uh, como lo están, están haciendo, están compounded dos veces al año, Puse un 2 aquí y aquí, y para encontrar 0.24, tuve que pensar cuál número se, cuando se divide por 2 te da 0.12. Ok, hagan 0.12 multiplicado por 2, y eso te da el número que va aquí, 0.24. Y ahora lo, lo cambié para que sea compounded quarterly. Quarterly quiere decir cada quarter, cada cuarto. Ok, así que cuatro veces al año. 
Así que le, le puse un 4 aquí abajo y aquí, y cuando divido 0.24 por 4, me da 0.06. Hey, listen, on the test, the question is kind of different, but you got to do the same thing. You got to go like from one, from one unit to the other. Um, so it's a little tricky. All right. All right, let me move on. All right, so there's two questions on section two that have to do with this, all right? All right, numbers 14 and 15. There are two questions on section two about the sum and product of rational and irrational numbers. You could use this chart while you're doing the exam. It would be a smart idea, okay? Hay dos preguntas en la segunda sección sobre la suma y los productos de número, números racionales y irracionales. All right, first of all, the sum of two rational numbers is rational. And the sum of two irrational numbers is sometimes irrational. And I put an example. Okay, so like if you add this number, All right, this is a number. If I add this number plus this number, um, when you combine like terms, the, the square root of 2 cancels out with the negative square root of 2. And you're left with 3 plus 3 equals 6. So that's why the sum of two irrational numbers is sometimes irrational and sometimes it's rational. Number three, the sum of a rational number and an irrational number is irrational. Number four, the product of two rational numbers is rational. All right, number five is one that we should look at. The product of two irrational numbers is sometimes irrational. All right, so look, let me demonstrate something. Um, I'll do a couple of examples. The square root of nine times the square root of nine. What's the square root of nine? By the way, the square root of nine is a, is a, is a rational number, okay? But I'm, I'm using this to lead me to something else, okay? The square root of nine is three. The square root of nine is three. So if I multiply three times three, I get nine. If I multiply the square root of nine times the square root of nine, I get the square root of 81. What's the square root of 81? Nine. So what am I trying to get you to see? That whenever you're multiplying the square root of a, of a number times the square root of that same number, look at what the answer is. The answer is the same number that's right here. I'll do another example. The square root of four times the square root of four. Okay, what's the square root of four? Two. What's the square root of four? Two. So if I multiply that, I get four. If I multiply this, I get square root of 16, which also equals four. So whenever you multiply the square root of a number times the square root of that same number, the answer is the number underneath the radical sign. Okay, why did I demonstrate that? To show you this. These numbers are rational, okay? But square root of five is irrational. If I multiply the square root of five times the square root of five, by knowing this little concept, I can figure out that the answer has to be five. So here I have an irrational number times an irrational number, and the answer is a rational number. And last, the product of a rational number and an irrational number is irrational, all right? The main ones that they'll try to get you with are the ones, the two that I put examples for. Okay, those are the main ones to understand. Okay, lo, 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 lo más importante de entender son los dos que le puse un ejemplo. Porque esos son los que le tratan de engañar con esos dos casi siempre. Alright guys, that concludes the review for section 2 of your exam. Make sure to study for both sections with the, with the reviews that I made so that you could get a better grade on your on your next algebra 1 exam which is uh, very soon good luck